All right, here we go. My name is Travis Neville. This is the Travis Neville Podcast. I got the opportunity um, uh, the other night to record with Jared and Ethan from Brothers Creed Podcast. They are actually brothers who are very dedicated fathers and want to be great men in every way they can be. So they got a hold of my book and really enjoyed it. And uh, so we talked about that and some other things. And just a great conversation. Really enjoyed talking with these guys. And I'm glad to count them as part of my network. I hope that my conversation with Ethan and Jared from a Brothers Creed podcast helps you to get your shit together. That's great. All right, Travis. Uh, it's so great to talk to you. Uh, thanks for taking the time to meet with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Super excited to chat. So, Travis, I think that uh, our listeners don't know you and, and your listeners don't know us. So I think it, it might be great to just give a little bit of an intro. Uh, maybe you could introduce yourself and then Ethan and I could both introduce our, ourselves and what a Brothers Creed podcast is all about. Uh, and then we can dive into some other topics uh, uh, about manliness and fatherhood here. Yeah, you got it. My name is Travis Neville. Uh, I work to help men be better at being men, specifically. We live in a world uh, that is, for better or for worse, attempting to sort of feminize men in a lot of ways. And um, I'm trying to help men understand that uh, even though you have these pressures come from the outside, who you are at your core is a good thing. Who you are at your core is going to be helpful to, to a family. Who you are at your core as a man is going to make you a great community leader. Um, all of these things that you can get confused about because of the signals you get off of screens. Um, I'm trying to sort of push back against, but that's what I do. I'm a writer. I've got my third book will come out in June. Uh, it's titled mastering masculinity uh, the book. That's out now is called reviving masculinity. That's one we'll talk about today. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I run a podcast to that, uh, to that end, I'm trying to promote that work and uh, help guys feel more comfortable about uh, just being themselves. That's what I do. Excellent. And how long have you been doing your podcast? Oh, man, I'm at about four years right now. Excellent. Um, I've been hit and miss. I was great at getting it every week for about 100 episodes, and then uh, I started building my own home. Oh, and man, that took that's a lot project. of time. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't in a place to actually have the internet service to be able to do it. So um, I slowed down a little bit, but I'm back in action now and enjoying it. Yeah, so I think I'm at 112 episodes right now. So she's going all right. Very good. And you said you, said you were coming out with your third book reviving masculinity is the one we have now the one that we're going to talk about today what's the other one uh the first book i wrote is called the jossman method it is a specifically a, a male take on how to in a very organized fashion put put structure to healing uh, okay. so essentially it's how to get yourself out of a, a bad spot whether it's a divorce whether it's um going to jail, whether it's the death of a family or whatever those, those low points you might have in your life. Um, it's a, it's a 12 habit uh, system mm -hmm. for scoring yourself daily so that you can know on a mathematical, from a mathematical equation, Hey, I'm doing a good job. Oh, interesting. I, yeah. I'm running my life. Well, that was my first book. And yeah, the, it's uh very much transitioned to into the masculinity stuff very quickly. And that's where we are now. <laughs> very cool. And are you a dad yourself? Do you have? I'm not. You know, that's okay. an unusual situation for me, man. I had uh, my whole life. I thought that's what I would be doing. And sometimes I wake up and still disorienting. How am I in my 40s and I'm not raising a family? It's the weirdest thing. So I chose to uh, use the the information I'd collected through my years as a high school teacher mm -hmm. and my years, again, anticipating being a father, coaching, doing all these things. I developed a, a, a basis of knowledge. And uh, because I'm not in the classroom anymore and I, and I don't have my own children, I need to, you know, give that back. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm doing. Right. That That's the deal. So, no, no, I don't have children. man. I always wanted to. It just never worked out. No, I love that. Well, you're still by teaching fathers and and inspiring men to be better uh, in many ways. You are helping those kids as well. Uh, and that's what kind of what we, we try to do as well. Yeah. I'm excited to hear about what you guys do, man. Tell, tell me more about that. Yeah. My listeners are going on here for sure. You want to go first, Ethan? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so uh, my name is Ethan, pa Ethan Thomas. Um, Jared and I, uh, we started a Brothers Creed podcast about three and a half years ago, 
Um, October of 2020. Yeah, so we were... Uh, Out of Jer- the pandemic. Yeah, Jared, <laughs> nice. Jared and I live about 45 minutes away from each other, and uh, we we both have four kids um, that are about the same ages. Uh, I have three boys and a girl. Um, Jared is, is two years older than me, almost two years older than me. Um, and we were sitting around one night, you know, our wives were, were sitting over, uh, in, in, on the couch and they were talking, our kids were, were playing games and, and Jared and I were in the office and we were sitting in the chairs and just, just talking about life, talking about marriage and kids and, and careers and everything else. And we kind of looked at each other and we were like, we should record this conversation. Like, <laughs> like these are awesome conversations. Not only like do we think that other people and other men that are in similar circ- circumstances as us would benefit from, from just hearing these things? But um, I think our kids would be interested in, in this conversation 50 years from now, 20 years yeah, from it's, now, or even it's posterity, even today. right? You're, yeah. Yeah. You're leaving and that so, information for them. I'm conscious of that myself. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. hundred percent. And so we, we were like, well, let's, let's start a podcast, you know? And we're like, really should we should we do that you know and, and we're like well okay well what, what would we call it and we went through all these different types of things and and made a bunch of suggestions and then we we're like what what you know we came we came up with a brother's creed and uh, a creed is a set of of principles or guidelines that or aims that help guides one actions in your life and so us being brothers and and, and the brotherhood that exists out there of, of fathers and men that are trying to be better uh, we were like, man, let's put together what we feel that creed or that set of principles should be so that us personally can become better men, better fathers, better husbands, uh, and that we can help inspire others to do the same and, and that we can help inspire the, the next generation to be better than us. Um, and that's really where, where it started. And, the the podcast has evolved over time. Um, really, it started out with anything that was uh, motivation, experiences, and exploration were our three tenets. And anything mm. that we felt that motivated us, we'd talk about it. Anything that we wanted to explore, we would explore it. You know, hey, I want to learn more about masculinity, or I want to learn more about uh uh, grit, or I want to learn more about whatever it might be. Aliens. I don't know. Whatever it was, whatever it was that interested us, we were all over it. Um, and then, and then, uh, um, experiences was really diving into maybe a little bit more of history. You know, talking about our own personal experiences in life um, and sharing those and being open and vulnerable. But at the same point, uh, talking and sharing the experiences that other people had in history whether it is, you know, war stories or people that, that, that had amazing inventions or, or struggles that, that people overcame in, in extreme um, uh, situations of, uh, of um, overcoming obstacles or whatever it might be. And so, you know, Jared and I ha- have grown, I'd say, uh, stronger in our relationship because of this, but others that have listened as well. Um, have told us that uh, it's just it's refreshing and I'm sure you've gotten feedback too just to kind of um, talk about things that it seems in today's society are kind of being swept under the rug oh man yeah I love that feedback you don't get it as much of course as you'd like to get it but when you do I figure it's a one to ten rule right so when you got a little positive feedback there are ten people that you helped that just didn't say anything to you and that's yeah. okay. So remember that you're impacting way more people than you think you are. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Yeah. I mean, Ethan, uh, did a great job of explaining uh, a lot of the th- things that, uh, our podcast is about. I think that in, in one, in some ways I'll talk about some of the things that he didn't mention. Um, I think it's been for, you know, we, we talk about building a personal creed, a set of beliefs or virtues that you live by. Uh, and etching that creed on your heart, uh, and then growing that over time and strengthening that. Uh, so many times, I think that uh, it's important to remember things. We forget things so easily uh, that mm. if you 
you know, look at, uh, you know, you read the, go read the Bible or you know, a lot of times it's talking about, remember, remember this or remember that, or remember your ancestors or remember the promises that were made. And so being able to remember and keep those, uh, your creed, uh, and the virtues and what you want to achieve, like on the forefront of your mind is so important. And the podcast selfishly for me has allowed me to do that because it's like, Hey, Ethan and I will rub shoulders and talk with people who are interesting like yourself, Travis, or like lots of other people. Like last month we met with this guy from, um, he runs a social media account called the father's guild. Uh, he talked to us about some of the challenges that he's recently accepted around not yelling at his kids, or we've met with people mm -hmm. who are real estate investors. We met with people who are goals, who are experts at goal setting. We've met with people who treasure hunters treasure hunters we met with a kid a kid who goes and explores like you know mines in the desert just all mm. kinds of, those are more fun episodes but we we talked with lots of different people who are also uh focused on um improving themselves uh and adhering to a, a personal code of conduct uh and i love that we probably get to roll shoulders with those folks uh but also it's a creative it's a great creative outlet as well uh i, I know that you're an author that's which is such a great creative outlet uh, some of our episodes that we have done, are, are we are they're a little bit more theatrical uh, in a way, especially when we talk about history. We did one on the uh, uh, like famous duos. Uh, we actually partner with another podcast, friends of ours called Virtuous Men, uh, and we kind of tell these stories of history and we put music to it and sound effects, and those have been really a, a fun thing to do. But also to talk about the virtues uh, of these people who have gone before uh, and remember them. I think I remember Ethan did one on the Wright brothers. Uh, and I did Lewis and Clark in that famous duo as well. North was, Carolina. Right, yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, and uh, just great episodes. And so we're, we've we've been doing episodes almost every single week. Uh, up until this year, we've decided to slow down a little bit, do two a month. Uh, but we're uh, we're loving it. And we're, we're so thankful for the opportunity we have to meet with folks like yourself, Travis, and, and read your book. Thank you for sending us your book, by the way. That was a, that was a pleasure to read. You're welcome. Uh, Glad you enjoyed it. So... So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit about us, and and uh, you know we're brothers, and so we tease each other every now and then, and uh, it's fun. We have, we usually we're, we're pretty aligned with our opinions, but sometimes uh, we can we, we can diverge. <laughs> Wouldn't be fun if you didn't. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and we had uh, we had one of our brother in laws, uh, in, in the early days of the podcast, he was like, "You guys agree too much." <laughs> It's like, wow, we're, we're very similar. And he's, he's like, you guys need yeah. to disagree on stuff. Like purposefully take, like one per, have one person take the opposite view just so you can argue about it and make it more, you know, interesting. And I was like, well, okay. So, so we try to be more vocal and like, well, I don't know if I believe that or, you know, uh, but so fun, fun stuff. Yeah. Sure. But uh, yeah, so Travis, uh, uh, now that we've got those introductions out of the way, wanted to talk with you about your book. Uh, your, your book that you've written here, The Ideal Man, Reviving masculinity. Uh, first of all, thank you for sending it to us. Uh, it was a great. I would call it a, a little read. It was quick. Uh, not not too many pages, and had some great insights in there. And we even Ethan and I even found some pages in there with some uh, custom uh, notes that you had with your signature in there. So thank you for those as well. <laughs> You're welcome. And uh, one of the things I, I like about this book, just from looking at the surface of it, and for those who, of you who can't see it. Um, Maybe you're not on YouTube, but right on the front of the cover, it says uh, Ideal Man, Reviving Masculinity. Uh, he's holding it up there uh, for those that are on YouTube. Uh, and he's got a list of, basically, a list of virtues here. Uh, and I love, and, and then each of the chapters in the book is covers a, a different one of these virtues in that these virtues coalesce to create the ideal man. Uh, Indeed. Would that be an accurate yeah. description, Travis? <laughs> they they marinate together. Great <laughs> ideal man. Yeah, you know it's it's. Uh, I realize it's a high bar. Uh, you know, I, I would encourage people to not just pick two and and make that your identity. Um, you know, there's a lot of work here that you can do. There's a lot of places where you can improve your life, and that's the whole idea, right? Uh, so if you think if you feel like you're a, you're a pretty good you're a pretty good pro at four or five of these, you're doing a pretty good job. And uh, if you're aware of four or five more and working on those, well, that's even better. I mean, the whole concept behind it was this. We're looking at a, a country right now where 43% uh, of children are, are raised without their father in the home, at least for part of their youth. And, uh, you know, it occurred to me just from being in the dating world and just talking to people that 
maybe a lot of men just never really learned how to be men. So I so I distilled it. I tried to make it. I'm glad you said that, Jared, that it was a quick read. That was the concept. I, I wanted it to, it didn't need to be super deep and super, you know, bunch of $5 words in there. But um, yeah, th these are the things that you should be aware of that, that make you a man. You know, there's two things that, two categories of masculinity, right? There's the, the things that people will label as toxic. And uh, usually those are the things uh, the three of us would just call somebody who's a jerk, right? And then there are the things that uh, the other category are the things that make you different than a woman. And, and that's, you know, what uniquely makes you, makes you masculine. Things like being competitive, uh, being bold, uh, stoicism, I believe, is a strong trait of masculinity. And that isn't repressing your emotions. It's just making sure they don't spill out onto other people. So, yeah, that's the, that's the, the concept of it, right? I'm going to give you some a manual, you know, a blueprint. If you weren't taught these things, if you didn't have that role model to look up to, well, here's what he would have taught you. Yeah, I love that. Recently, Travis, we did an episode, on, and Ethan and I talk about virtues. Um, we've called them lots of different things. We call them we've, at one point we've called them credos, or just these little mm -hmm. nuanced things like you know some of the stuff in here: accountability, uh, decisiveness, honorable, honest. These are some of the things in the cover of your book. We've talked about these things as well. And so I was like, hey, this is a great partnership. Uh, and one of the things that uh, we recently did was an episode about harmony. And I, I love we, some of the research I did on harmony was that in uh, kind of this Taoism, uh, harmony is kind of the, the culmination of their main principles. And like when you get all these virtues together, harmony is like this fifth virtue that's created uh, that's like the heavenly principle. And so I feel like that just rings like having just done that episode and thinking about that and thinking about all these these um, different virtues you have here on your cover that you cover in your book. It's like if we can get a, a synergy and a harmony of all these together, it creates almost something entirely different uh, that it's like a whole new virtue out of all of this. And that's and I think that that new virtue is what the ideal man is. I agree. Yeah, you're not just the sum of your parts. Um, just like any professional group, uh, any team, uh, you're better as a group than you are this again, the sum of the parts. So if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together, tie everything together as much as you can. Each, each step, I, you know, I put them in a specific order. I think physical fitness is the most accessible and it's the base for lots of things. But as you go through things, get a little more challenging and, and they, they build on each other. So I very much agree with you. It, you know, when you get all the way to the end, you feel like you've got a grasp of everything. Yeah. Harmony would be a really nice outcome. It sure would be. <laughs> that's the last, that's the last one on here. Just like tie, now tie all this together and live all these every day. <laughs> yeah. That's actually uh, the new book. We'll have a lot of that. The new book is uh, outcomes, right? So this is the habits. The new book is going to be sort of midlife checklist. These are the things that should be in your life. If you've been doing things right, things like love and home and, mastery and having mentors. These are the things that will be there if you're doing it right. Yeah. And harmony is a part of that for sure. That's awesome. <clears throat> uh, one of the things that, uh, as I was reading through these different principles or attributes or, uh, virtues, w w whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's funny cause I'm kind of taking a personal inventory of myself and I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I'm actually doing pretty good That's at this idea. one. And then I hit some other ones. I'm like, dude, I am not doing too good at this other one. Or, um, you know, and, and kind of read through some of the suggestions, but some of the things that one of the things that I really kind of appreciated was was the setup um, in, in the book. You kind of talk about the problem and then the explanation of why that's a problem. And then you get into the solution, which is where, where we get into, you know, these different traits that that these masculine traits. Um, and I, I really appreciated that that setup. Um, one of the things that that kind of struck me is as really interesting is is our children um, for for better or for worse potentially for, for for worse but they have the potential of having limited exposure to that masculine energy in their life right they are they go to school for eight hours a day where they are taught by by women, which is 78%, awesome. you know, 78% yeah, of I, teachers are women I, much higher I, I, at the elementary level. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, we've had one teacher, um, across our, th our three kids so far that have been, been a man. Um, 
and you know these the, these schools are, are are run by women, led by women, and, and which is uh, you know to a certain extent there's a reason why they're there because they have yeah that, there's that, a fit that, that, for sure that curating and, and, and growth and, and, and really kind of nurturing of the mind in that atmosphere, which I think is great. Um, but that without exposure to that masculine side of things or that masculine energy, yeah, it can be very dangerous. Um, and it, it's, it's something that really kind of resonated with me and even gave me kind of a feeling as, as a father Right. Like I need to make sure that I'm on top of this because, you know, if 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 I'm not, then you know, not who's, ra who's raising my kids. Right. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and how are they yeah. going to get that masculine uh, energy or how are they going to get that 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 masculine, uh, you know, feeling or, or teaching example in their life? Example. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And boys specifically. Uh, all Well, you know, you guys know this. You have kids. They're going to do everything they see. They'll do most of what you say. But they'll do everything they see, right? So they got to see you doing it right. Tell them about Ethan. Tell them about this your your boys. The video <laughs> you just showed me. So uh, Jared uh, is a uh, he does br a blue belt in br Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, he's ah, been congratulations! In, in, Good uh, for you. Thank you. Uh, in that endeavor for a while, um, and he actually had a tournament that was him and his his uh, son, oldest son, competed in this tournament, and it was like fifteen minutes from our house, and so. Uh, we we're like, yeah, we're gonna go and we're gonna support, you know, Uncle Jared and and uh, uh, our cousins, you know. And we went there and and it was just awesome. My kids loved it and they enjoyed it. My boys, my two older boys, are are, are nine and seven, and they wrestle all the time. Um, but <laughs> they, uh, it was on Saturday, and so we come home. And my wife and I are sitting downstairs, and and we're kind of in and out of the house doing stuff, getting stuff done. And it just sounds like the kids are like bowling upstairs or something like that. And we're just like, what is going on? So we have a camera in their room. And so we, we, we pulled up the, the camera in their room and they are wrestling. I mean, they're like all in their role in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Right. And they're, and, awesome. and my, my seven year old, uh, has my, has my nine year old in a headlock and he's yelling at him, tap, 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 you know, and, and, and then they, they're, they're rolling over and, and, and just, they're, they're just doing what boys do. Um, That's right. And as sometimes as a parent, I'm like, you know, don't do that. You're going to break something or you're going to whatever else, you know, are you going to get hurt? But I kind of have to back off uh, of that myself a little bit because I want them to have those experiences. I mean, Jared and I wrestled all the time. I mean, my mom would still say, oh, the couch downstairs is broken because, you know, you and your brother would wrestle on it and stuff. And mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah, you know, we did. And it probably is broken. Yeah, that. I think it's a funny, uh, just a funny story because that just happened. But I think that part of, and I think Travis would love to hear more of what you have to say about this because I think this is where, uh, you know, your the work you're trying to do now focuses on. But it's all the modeling of masculinity doesn't have to come from the father. And I think that sometimes in a, in our society now, where we have less of a community, uh, everybody feels mm -hmm. like they have to do it on their own. Mothers feel mm -hmm. like they have to raise the kids on their own. They don't have a lot of support network around them. Uh, it's not like it was where you just kind of drop the kids off at grandma and grandma's house and just, you know, go do whatever. A lot of people don't live near their parents anymore or their parents aren't that supportive. And so um, I, you know, think it's so important for you to provide opportunities for your kids to be modeled masculinity by not only yourself, but others. And so, like, mm -hmm. in that situation, he brought his kids to see my, t my tournament. Uh, they saw me roll. They saw me do uh, my, one of my roles. Uh, and then my oldest son. And then, you know, I volunteer and, and help with the kids' classes at, at, at jiu-jitsu or coach soccer. I know Ethan has coached soccer uh, or, or basketball or other things. And so it's so important for good men to volunteer uh, their time for the benefit of the community because there's a lot of kids out there that don't have those those role models and there's a lot of mothers out there uh that desire that there's a lot of single moms uh, they put in their kids to jujitsu because hey my, i know that my boy needs a masculine influence and i don't mm -hmm. know where else to get this and i don't trust him maybe send him to boy scouts you know maybe there's they have concerns about that you know and so um i think that's so important and travis i'd love to hear more of your thoughts on that too because i know you're, you're really engaged with that kind of work right now 
Yeah, I get that question a lot, man. I was just in, uh, I was in a, did a men's group last night. I'm noticing that my tag here on our, uh, on our Zoom call says Moral Mentor because those are the, that was the group I was working with last night, so it doesn't even say my name. But anyway, uh, it's often that I get uh, that question in various for, formats. Um, hey, you know, how how can I, as a single mother, uh, access your, what you're teaching? You know, how, how can I uh, bring this into my son's life? Um, and, you, you, you know, you got to do exactly what you're talking about, Jared. It's, it's uh, getting them into not just situations where they're around men but where they can kind of do manly stuff i mean rolling doing any kind of martial sports uh wrestling um, i was a korean taekwondo guy so stand up stuff um the football rest all that stuff is is a great place for you know these kids to be able to i mean even if you're not specifically looking at older men even just interacting with other boys doing things that are that the schools try to socialize out of kids like wrestling. Imagine what would happen if teachers saw you, the, your boys wrestling in the hallway, right? They put a stop to it immediately. And, um, you know, that stuff needs to happen. I mean, it's part of your DNA. It has to happen. Uh, so I, t I talk about that a lot. I mean, that's usually my answer. Hey, I'm sorry. You're in a bad situation here. You don't have the, the, the quintessential, the perfect, the most impactful, you know, male role model. And that's their, biological father but you can access it in other ways like i grew up i was lucky to have a great dad but i also had really awesome uncles and i had some great coaches and i had a couple of neighbor men who let you know, i'd work for them and i would see different aspects of it and you know you're always kind of picking and choosing right so i'm an amalgamation of all those guys i'm an awful lot like my dad uh, but I picked up a lot from my neighbor, Dell, this older guy that I used to work with. He had a horse farm and I got to do things. Because, you know, my dad was a teacher. He's a white collar guy, not super rough and tumble where Dell, he's a construction guy, like blue collar, right? Same thing. My uncles were, were worked at the at the GM plant. They're super blue collar. So you pick up those things. But um, yeah, and, and I'm aware of that. So that's the answer I give. You know, if you're not able to provide it yourself and as Ethan, as you said, you know, it's not really on you to do all of it. Matter of fact, it's on you to give them more of a diverse um, exposure, right? Uh, you know, my parents were really cool about that when I was a kid. You know, oh, you want to go to this this house of these people who are very dirty or whatever, right? They want me to experience all kinds of different forms of life, and so you paint your own picture and you decide what you want to be. So that's the answer I give, right? You get your kid around uncles and and even grandfathers and coaches are awesome. These are professional mentors. Okay, they're professional role models. That's what coaches are. Um, having around those are great. But again, being very con conscious of having boy in interaction as well, right? Getting them ro rolling around, playing in the grass, and, and jumping their bikes over ramps. I don't know if kids do that anymore, but yeah, keep seeing on the internet that they don't. But man, it's such a staple of my upbringing, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no helmet, no suspension on the bike, no knee pads, and we were just flying over people. Uh, but yeah, seeing getting that. Uh, and Jordan, Jordan Peterson talks a lot about it. I'm a big fan of his. Um, about, uh, you know, don't, don't mess with a kid while he's skateboarding or something is what he says and what you're going to learn, you know, and mom wants to protect her, her kid. And that's a great motivation. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but dad is going to lean usually on the side of, uh, well, let's let him fail a little bit and see how he handles it. Right. Failure is a part of life. You're going to screw up all the time. I screwed up this morning. Um, it happens all the time. So the skateboard thing, right. Kids are going to fall down. They're going to try some things they've never tried. They're going to skin their knee. They're going to bump their arm, but then they're going to get back up and go, you know, that really wasn't all that bad. I healed up and I'm able to keep moving. And what that does is it eliminates fear. Okay. Or at least decreases it significantly. And if you're going to live a life where you're scared all the time, well, that's no life at all. Ask Teddy Roosevelt. I don't know if you guys are big fans of T.O. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, you the know, he's born with asthma. Rider. Doctors told, <laughs> yeah, he could never told me he could never work out or do anything or he would die. And he's like, well, I'm not going to live like that. So he created his own athletic routine and work himself through uh, his his asthma. And you guys know what he became, right? So yeah, that's the idea. We wanna teach uh, kids and boys specifically, um, you know, how to deal with failure, how to fall down, how to get back up, pretty simple stuff. It's it's funny, I, I told Jared, as we were kind of just talking beforehand, um, and Jared was like, well, maybe you shouldn't say that, but it, it's funny because reading through the book uh, and all the different examples you give, you give examples of like specific people and quote people and everything else, and I'm like, man, this sounds a lot like, like my social media, you know, I'm flipping through and I see Tim Kennedy and I see Jordan Peterson and I see all these different people. And I'm like, man, this, this is kind of a, a accumulation of a lot of the things that 
that I've seen and I agree with, and and I guess that the algorithm tells me that uh, I would like, and mm -hmm. uh, and I, it it really resonated. For sure. I appreciate you noticing that. I felt like I had to have a a good balance in there. You know, I got a ton of the founding fathers. I've got all kinds of people who are long dead, who were wise men, philosophers, great thinkers, uh, excellent with action. Uh, but I also want to keep things current as well. And yeah, those are the things that, of course, come across my feed. <laughs> big fan of Jordan Peterson, big fan of Tim Kennedy. Um, those guys are, are doing it right, love their stuff. You know, Tim Kennedy's got a school going. The Apogee, yeah, Apogee, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've got a uh, an appointment to talk with, uh, man, and I always blank on his name, but the guy who actually runs the school, I can see his, Matthew Boudreau, pretty impressive yeah. guy. And I'm super excited to hear what he has to say again. Uh, because what I'm doing right now, what I'm working on trying to develop, the fourth book will be, here you go, educator. Here you go, single mother. Here you go, whoever it is. This is how to engage and and, and uh, be great at helping boys grow and be the best they can be. And the Apogee School, I think, is doing a great job of that specifically. Uh, yeah. Certainly not leaving out girls, but uh, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. Yeah, another thing I, I, I kind of liked one of the things, the just the little uh, details in your book is that at the at the beginning of each uh, a virtue, you have an accompanying uh, music. So, for example, the one here, uh, instinctive. You have accompanying music, bulls on parade, rage against the machine. Uh, I, I didn't quite pull up the songs, but I could hear them in my mind. You know, as I was like, "Oh yeah, I love that song," or you know, okay, it's, sure. it kind of sets the tone for the chapter. So I thought that was a good touch. Thanks. Yeah, that's the idea. I wanted to kind of give you an idea. You know, it's it's hard to get tone from a book, right? You, the three of us sitting here talking, and I can see your faces and how your bodies are reacting to the things, right? So you can you can get that feel for for really where you're coming from. Uh, in a book, they can't see my face. They're not listening to my voice. There's no up, down tempo. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to give a tone, right? Something to, uh, so you understand if I'm kind of messing around a little bit or if I'm being, being, being very serious, if we're all about f fire, like the, the that, that chapter is about, uh, you know, eliminating overthinking. Essentially, there's, there's three ways you can go. You can do, you can do the right thing, the wrong thing or nothing. And that's the order that you should do them. I and the right thing's the best thing. The, the wrong thing is the second best thing to do, and nothing is the worst thing you can do when you have a decision to be made. So Bulls on Parade is that very high tempo, you know, just screaming and running, acting on acting on instinct rather than cognition, and uh, that's what it is to be decisive. Hey, based on what I know, this is what I'm doing. We're going to follow it, and that's that. Get, glad you guys like that. You know, yeah. I went to uh, New York City and met with a guy called Sven Erlinson, wrote a book called There's a Hole in My Love Cup and several other books. Interesting guy. And uh, he's the only one I ever met who did the same thing. Oh, really? He's got music in his. Oh, yeah, he's got music in his chapters, too. But he like talks about it. He's like, here's why I like the song. It's great because X, Y, Z. And he talks through it. <laughs> and uh, also a nice, nice thing. But I remember presented that to him and he's like, oh, I already did it. I'm like, oh, ah, man, cool. I thought I had this great <laughs> idea and somebody else already did it. You know, hey, great minds think alike. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to kind of pose a, a topic of discussion, <clears throat> one uh, question, and, and let's say, I'll kind of say this kind of pertains to a couple of the different uh, attributes here, but uh, maybe mostly accountability. Um, mm -hmm. you know, as you're thinking in, a, a, of accountability as a father, uh, there's a lot of times where I don't do things perfectly. Uh, in fact, most of the time, I don't do things perfectly, right? Especially with my uh, my oldest child, he's, he's nine, almost, almost 10 years old. And it's interesting because I, I heard, a uh, a little comment, um, uh, on a video where, uh, it was parents kind of talking to, uh, um, the, you know, their, their future oldest child. And they were saying something along the lines of, right, as you are experiencing things for the first time we are experiencing things for the first time as well from mm. for your for your oldest child like my my youngest child i've gone through basically everything that that they have gone that they are going through i've gone through with three other kids but my oldest one you know he's getting you know starting to uh go into puberty and different things like mm -hmm. that and so it's just like he 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 is is experiencing these things for the first time and and i'm experiencing them as a first time too as a parent um, but the kind of the question and the topic is as, as a father, 
uh, and I'd love to know your opinion about this. Uh, how much should you, ex- uh, how much should you apologize, right, for being wrong? Like maybe I, I, I I'm not calm and I yell, or I, uh, you know, something happens, right? Or uh, he says, you know, why do I need to do this? And I say because I told because I said so, right? Mm-hmm. Or whatever it might be. Um, my, my wife is really good at this, and, and if she yells or she would ever, she'll go in and she'll say, she'll apologize. She'll, I'm, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done that, you know, whatever. And I, I think sometimes that can kind of be, I guess if it's done too much, I almost feel like that can be seen as a weakness. Too much um, good cop, right? That's, yeah, it's too much yeah, good cop like right there. Over apologetic. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm supposed to be this this authority figure in, home, in, in the home. Mm-hmm. But if my son is getting exposure to me constantly being wrong, which I am a lot of times, maybe not fully wrong, but maybe I'm not completely right, I guess what's that balance? What's the balance between you know admitting and saying, hey, son, I, I shouldn't have done that. I was wrong. And you know I'm the adult. I'm here. I need to show you that this is you know how things are done, and this is the direction, and this is whatever. I don't know. What, you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so there's a, you're right, there's a fine line, but I think that you're, as long as you stay on the accountability side and you don't move into the excuse side, you know, where you're excusing what they did because of what you did, uh, that's never the case. Um, you know, I think it's it's an excellent thing as a father and as a man to say, hey, you know what, I was, I got angry there and I regret that. I wish I'd been able to present it to you where I wasn't angry. Doesn't mean that you were not wrong son. It doesn't mean that you didn't do X, Y, Z incorrectly. And it doesn't mean that I was wrong to present you the information. I just should have presented it in a different way. You know, as long as you keep that clear, all right, here are the things that, uh, you know, that you need to, to work on. But I want to show you as, and you, you probably won't say these words, but I want to show you what it's like as a man to say, hey, I'm owning this. I did that wrong. And next time I won't, next time I'll work on it. And that that's a huge lesson for a young man to let, to, to learn. Uh, hey, I know I did this wrong. And I'm saying that because I want to admit that I did it wrong. And I want you to know that I know that I did it wrong. As long as you, you know, and you, you don't transition into the emotional piece of it, which I would assume that's probably the direction where your wife's going to go, where maybe she's emotional about her upsetness, right? I'm so sorry. I wish I hadn't. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Uh, but uh, as long as you don't go in that, within that direction, looking for forgiveness specifically, uh, I think then you're okay. As soon as you do that, you're losing that power dynamic. You're the you're the parent. They're the kid. You don't need their permission to be their dad, and you don't really need their appreciation either. If you're lucky, that'll come when they're much older. Yeah, I like that. As you as you were talking, one of the things that came in my mind too is is you said you know yeah be be accountable and 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 recognize if if there is a mistake or whatever else. But for me personally, it's like okay, well. I need to do everything I can when that happens to not make that same mistake over and over and over and over and over again. Cause then I'm just constantly mm-hmm. apologizing for something that I always do. And right. is that, is that, uh, is that sincere? Is that truly taking accountability? If I'm just going to do the same exact thing, you know, next time and then be oh, so sorry that I yelled at you like that or that I did this or whatever else. Um, so I think it yeah has to be accompanied with with some change and then hopefully as I was just gonna can, say action yeah you yeah as you continue to to grow both of you in a relationship both of us um, hopefully kind of I I start to get a little bit better at this whole parenting thing yeah Jared I think you look that, like you have thoughts I want to hear what you have to no, say no yeah I I think that you kind of at the end there you kind of said what I was thinking but. And I'm not saying this is particularly you or your situation, but someone who is, you know, maybe generally saying this is just like, if you're saying, oh, man, I just keep losing my temper with my kids so much that I have to come up with a complex strategy so that I can either apologize or not apologize. It's like, that's like saying my clutch keeps, that's like saying my clutch keeps yeah. going out of my car. My car keeps lurching forward and lurching forward. So I'm going to go to the tires and see if I can let out some air and make it a smoother ride. It, it's kind of like, no, you need to fix that clutch first and get your own stuff in order uh, because the tires, it's just that's the end of the, that's all the way down the line. Maybe it might it's help a little It's probably your bit. left foot. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. operator error. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's <laughs> that's like, the problem. Exactly. So it's like, 
your focus, I, I, I feel like, I mean, I think it's a good question because I think well, sometimes we do make mistakes. But if you're finding yourself saying, hey, I'm making mistakes all the time. I'm always short with my kids or I'm, I'm flying off the handle with my kids all the time. And it's like, man, you're, you're asking the wrong question. You need to be you need to be asking the question, uh, what can I do to change my behavior or take a, a take a exactly. step back in a situation like that and think and respond calmly so that. I'm not having to apologize to my kids all the time. I can, you know, or, or at least I'm saying things. I mean, I feel like if you have to apologize to your to your child or, or to someone, it's because you went above and beyond what you should have gone. If your kid, if you told your kids six times to go, you no, know, take a shower, and then on the seventh time you're like, dude, go take a shower, and you yell at your kid, you don't. I, I don't feel like you really have to apologize for that. You've given yeah, them seven I don't think that was on you. So it's all. like. Uh, and that happens all the time. And so it's kind of like, go take a shower. And, you know, you could still say something with force without having to scream. Uh, mm-hmm. So, but if you're like spanking your kid beyond what it, like for something that is minute or very small, or you're frustrated at work. And so you come home and you take it out on your kids. Those are the types of things you have to apologize for. So if that's happening on a regular basis, uh, something something's not aligned, something's not right, or you're not getting... Uh, out those frustrations that maybe you're carrying in from work, maybe you're carrying in from your relationship with your spouse, maybe you have in, in, uh, questions of maybe something's going on in your own mind uh, and you're taking down your kids. It's easy to take things out on kids because they just take it, you know, uh, but that's not what the what the ideal man would do. Uh, no, but, no, of course not. Uh, Ethan, I've just known you for a little while here and watching your body language and how you're talking about the situation. Uh, you don't seem like a guy who's got a bad temper to me. Uh, you probably not you don't let your kids that much. I think you you probably feel bad about it more than it probably presents, right? That's my guess. Uh, yeah, just keep it to you know. Hey, this is the part I know I did wrong. There's always two ways in conflict, right? There's always two parties, and own your stuff. And again, I think the best apology, as you said, Jared, change the behavior. Yeah, that's, that's the best apology awesome. there is. Ethan's I'm sure, your wife told you that. I've got, I've got, I've got some some very awesome kids. Yeah. Uh, they are, Good, they're great. Yeah, but it's not an accident, man. They're awesome because of you and your wife. That's it. But I think that, it, it, like, one of the nuances I think you're talking about, Ethan, is that, especially with my kids, is that each kid, each child, has is very different, and they require a special set of ways to motivate. Like my oldest, if I yeah. say, "Hey, I'll give you, I'll set a timer for one minute, if and you can clean up this stuff." He'll absolutely lose his mind, uh, and it, so. But my my second oldest and my third, if I say I'll give you one minute to clean up the stuff, it's like ooh, it's a race, it's on. So there's different ways to motivate your children to respond by saying different things, and so I think that part of Ethan, what you're talking about, is just like you need to find the way that each one of your children respond the most effectively, um, and when you can do that, uh, you know, it's it makes things a little easier, I think. Jared, what yeah. are the are those boys or girls? What are the ages of your I, kids? I have all boys. Uh, okay. Ten down to, well, four. So four, six, basically eight and ten. Okay. Just curious. We spaced them pretty good. <laughs> good for you, man. A couple years between. Good job. Good job. That that's gonna space out your college bills too. Yes, right? exactly. We've got four four or five twenty nine plans set up that we're dumping into each month. <laughs> Aren't those nice? Yeah, I'm always contributing to those for my nieces and nephews. Love it. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so that that was one thing from accountability that 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 I enjoyed. Um, another thing that, as I was reading through, talked about uh, that came to my mind was um, hobbies as a father, mm. and it's kind of interesting because we've had a couple different. Uh, theories around hobbies as a fa- father right we've we've had a couple different people on uh that talk about masculinity and fatherhood and and uh it's kind of a we get we get a a wide range of uh let's say expectations or standards you know we, we we've had some people on that are like if you're a father and if you care about your kids, then the then you'll just forget yourself, lose yourself. You don't exist. You'll just you know you'll die as a person, and everything you do, every waking second of the day is for your kids is is to provide for your kids and your wife. I'm picking up that you disagree with that, and that's a good thing. <laughs> Keep going. And and Jared and I were both just kind of like, 
I don't know, man. It's like if if you're not straight with yourself, mm-hmm. then then I, I feel like it's it's hard to get straight with 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 someone else. And so I, I know you've you've talked with lots of people from lots of different backgrounds, and I want to uh, hear your thoughts on the importance of fathers or men to have uh, something of their own, whether it's mm. whether it's a, a skill or a hobby or a community or something, you know, jujitsu or something like that. Um, I, what are your thoughts about the importance of that? I don't, I don't know if it could be more important. Uh, you know, if you don't, let's look at if you don't. Uh, that's a recipe for a midlife crisis right there. And when you're never, when you're just a hundred percent giving it away forever, that's impossible. You can't maintain that. Okay. It's, 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 it's unreasonable for you to expect yourself to. Uh, so know that, that you're headed for a bad end if you do that. And even if you don't, if you make it through, okay. And your kids all graduate and they're off on their own. Um, what do you have in your life at that point? You know, you and your wife are staring at each other. You got nothing to talk about. Because you didn't go do anything that day that you can bring back and bring to the relationship and be excited about, and she didn't either. Yeah, that's a that's a terrible situation. And again, it, it goes back to the role modeling thing, man. Um, you know, your kids want to see you enjoying your life, doing cool things, uh, being successful at things outside of your home. I mean, I'm sure they know that you guys have jobs, but it's they probably have very little contact with you while you're at work, unless you guys are working from home. And even then, you're probably in an office. Uh, they need to see you having fun because um, that's going to be their definition of who they're going to be. That's going to be their definition of being able to relax and have a good time. Um, I can't tell you how many times as a kid, my parents would, we'd have the family over aunts, uncles, cousins, or the neighbors. We had a lot of fun with the neighbors, right? The parents are over, the kids are playing, you know, the, the, the parents are having a beer and talking and telling stories and, and you just hear them laughing and joking and having a great time as adults together interacting while we're over there doing the same thing as kids. And even though we didn't give a rip about what they were talking about, we knew we watched them interact and have fun and enjoy it. And I watch my life now, guys. I do the same thing. Like, that's how my life goes. I live in this cool place, like a vac- whether that's vacation land for everybody else in Southeast Michigan. So I have house guests constantly. And what do we do, man? We sit around, we have a beer, we talk, we joke, we tell stories, we laugh, we have a great time. And that's the ultimate... Uh, definition of happiness right they're going to figure out hey this is what i want to be when i'm an adult what is it what does it be an adult look like well it's what you guys showed them and that's a big part of it right you yeah. have to have some things that you have excellent skills with maybe you're a big cyclist you like to go out and run or you just hit the heavy bag in, in the in the garage or, or you know what the heck you have a, you have a golf night whatever it is um do it enjoy it you gotta you gotta get away from the family too i mean that's a hugely important thing you gotta get out and sharpen the saw right you, you love, I learned this the first time I had a job where I, where I didn't leave the house where I was working from home, man, that easy chair was a lot more attractive and more beautiful when I wasn't l- looking at it all day, right? Your home is a much better place when you, when you come home to it right, than it is when you're there all the time. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't be more important. You got to have those things in your life for sure. You're, you're role modeling what a well-rounded man looks like. Yeah. I totally agree. Uh, just one, and I agree with what you said. I'll just add one piece onto that. That I think that as you know, this past weekend we did this this jujitsu tournament. Uh, lots of fathers and sons were there. Uh, lots of dads. Uh, it's a good dads go to the gym that I go to, and and there was three or four other dads. Uh, actually, maybe more like ten uh, that were there, and their sons were also competing, uh, and. They were modeling that courage uh, for their sons. Uh, they said, "You know what? I'm competing." Uh, and like I, one of my buddies, uh, he's a white belt, just a two stripe white belt, so you know, fairly, fairly new. Maybe he's been in jiu-jitsu maybe six months. And uh, his son is similar, which just just barely got in. Uh, his son got uh, in his first in his match. He got totally wiped out. So he, he, I think he did three matches and he lost every single one of them. Son was really bummed. Uh, and then his dad went into a match. I, I think he won once, and then I think he lost twice. And so his son could see his dad also having that same courage to walk into a fight uh, in a tournament situation where it's nerve-wracking, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and he can 
say, hey, I, if my dad can do, have the courage to do this, I can have the courage to do this. And so it's not only modeling, you know, like, oh, hey, son, this is how you build a fire or, hey, this is how you do this sure. jujitsu move or this is how you, uh, you know, punch a punching bag. But it's like this is what courage looks like. This is what service looks like. This is what kindness looks like. And so modeling those uh, attributes or virtues, like some of the things you have in your book here, uh, that's also uh, critically important. And you can do that through your own hobbies. Even if your kids, like for example, my, my, our podcast, you know, my kids, uh, we're modeling creativity. We're modeling brotherhood. We're modeling mm-hmm. uh, this, well, I mean, like kind of uplifting of the community around us. And so mm-hmm. even though our boys aren't involved with that, they can still see that. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is a cool thing. And my dad's got something going and he's got, he's mm-hmm. doing something with Uncle Ethan, you know, and it's like, yeah, we're, we're doing something together. And so it's kind of cool. Yeah, you guys are nailing it, man. And that, especially in the j- j- Jits specifically, they're watching you beat fear. Yeah. And man, what a great lesson to show them, hey? Good job. Uh, thank you. Well, we got about uh, 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 10 minutes left. And, and one of the things I wanted to chat with you about is uh, one of the things we usually do on our episode and and uh, is we interview guests. And I think this is a good thing for all of us to do, uh, as you'll be posting this on your podcast as well, is we go around and we talk about uh, something that is a part of our personal creed. Uh, so we are a Brothers Creed podcast, okay. and a creed is, like Ethan said earlier, a set of principles or beliefs that kind of guides you in your life. So uh, this could be something like a quote or a mantra or a scripture or whatever it may be. Uh, in fact, let's see, I think one of the last guys we had on our podcast, his mantra was uh, easy to love, hard to kill. I thought that was a kind of a cool one <laughs> <laughs> for him and his family. That, that was pretty cool. Uh, oh, man, that's good stuff right there. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something from an 80s karate movie. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. yeah, so you're asking what mine is. Yeah, yeah I have let's this, have you uh, share yours. Yeah. I picked this up in uh, Sedona when I was there a few years ago. I still have the price tag on it. The thing was like 25 bucks. It's just a regular... Um, one of these things where you'd have your name tag in front of your office, but it says, uh, do epic stuff on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's my, uh, that's my, that's my creed. That's my idea that, like I told you, I thought I would be raising a family. I'm not. Uh, so instead of that, I want to, you know, the worst thing I think you could be is on your, your, your deathbed looking back going, what did I do? What was, what did I do with my time that, was I worth the crap? Did I help anybody? Did I improve the world in any way? And uh, I want to make sure that I can say that I did, not just when I die, but tonight when I lay down. You know, did I bring my best to you guys? Did I present great information that's going to, let's be honest, change the world, right? And and your world is, is much smaller than you think. There's so many activists all over the internet. You've seen them all. They think they're going to change the whole world in China and Israel and, and Palestine and all this. Your world is your family and the people you work with and your neighborhood. That's about it, man. It doesn't go much further than that. And if you can, uh, you know, impact that you're changing the world. So that's my idea. Do cool stuff, man. I ran a marathon. I climbed a mountain. I built my own house. I've written books. I run a podcast. I think those are pretty epic. So, uh, yeah, that's my deal right there. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. And I love that. Uh, do epic stuff for sure. Uh, go get, get out of your comfort zone. Um, do it a lot, and uh, maybe Jared and I can share a little piece of our personal creed yeah. as well. You go for, for, yeah, you for go. I was hoping so, you would. <clears throat> so I'll go first. Um, it's it, it's kind of interesting because we've been doing this for you know, hundred and fifty seventy, 70 episodes, yeah. something like that. Congratulations, and, uh, that's a heck of an accomplishment. So <laughs> Thank you. There's a uh, there's a lot of stuff that that I could go back and uh, and dig into, but one thing that that comes to my mind specifically is, uh, I guess, a word is uh, resilience mm-hmm. and grit. Uh, that is something that I personally um, constantly think about. Right? Sometimes we run into situations where it sucks. You know, it might be physical pain. It might be mental pain. It might be emotional pain. Um, but being, being able to withstand those, uh, those, those winds and those tempests in your life, um, will, will 
definitely be easier if you can learn to get out of your comfort zone. If you can learn to be uncomfortable, whether it's through, you know, exposure therapy or, you know, a couple of things that come to mind is, you know, I'm, I am, I'm kind of like an introverted extrovert, right? So I, uh, I have the ability to talk with most anyone about most anything. And yeah, you seem um, very comfortable. And actually I've kind of built my career around, you know, vendor management and, and relationship building and things like that. Uh, but at the same point, sometimes I just, I just don't, in social situations, I don't like forced interactions. If it doesn't really flow, it's like, I don't know. I, I, I feel very uncomfortable. And so, you know, one of my, one of the things I hate worst than anything at work is like networking. I freaking hate networking. <laughs> well, but forced like, networking, right? When you're just talking to people that you kind of enjoy, <laughs> that's networking too. You just yeah, don't feel like yeah, it is. Yeah. It's not getting crammed down your throat, right? Well, I, yeah, I guess that's 100% true. But for me, it's yeah. like, you know, if I want to, I, I try to force myself in those social situations to, you know, go outside the box, go outside of my comfort zone. And, and the more that I do it, the more I become resilient to those situations to where when I'm put in those situations in the future, uh, I can, I can, I can deal with it. You know, it's not some kind of stressful thing that's going to completely just crumble me and collapse me. Uh, the same thing, um, I, I've, for the past couple of years, I'll, I'll, I take cold showers and it freaking sucks and I hate it, but it's something for me that like, you know, I'm standing in the shower and typically I take it just a, a, a hot shower and then I'll end the last like three minutes with a cold shower as cold as it'll go and I'll turn it, I'll turn it cold and I'll stand there and wait for it to get cold, let it run for a second before I get into it. And it's like this buildup. I have to like talk myself into it. It's like if you've ever been cliff jumping and you're at, you're you're at the edge of this cliff oh, and you're and you're like yeah. you're like oh man that's really far down. You're in this like limbo of I want to do it I, but I don't want to do it. I'm scared it's gonna maybe hurt or whatever else. And then being able to overcome that that inner voice that you know uh, as soon as I step in the water that my inner voice just starts screaming and I stay in the water until it stops. You and master then, that inner voice, right? Yeah, and then when it stops, and I'm just like, ah, oh, you know, this ain't that bad. This actually feels kind of yeah. nice. And yeah. so uh, I would say for anyone out there, part of my personal creed is trying to build resilience uh, in, in my own life so that when unexpected things come into my life that uh, are difficult or are hard, I, I, I can't crumble. I, there's too right. many, there's, there's too much, there's too many people that rely on me to just crumble. Get, uh, get yourself a mantra. I don't know if you have one or not, Ethan, but in those situations, uh, I got a buddy does the cold shower thing. His name's Chris Otto. Great dude. And uh, he just three, two, one, go. That's his thing. When, when he's facing something that's tough, he just in his head goes three, two, one, go, or say it out, say it out loud. And you'll get in the habit of whenever you're facing something difficult outside of that cold shower, you can just shake your head and go three, two, one, go and just do it. You know, have a mantra. That's just, yeah, that's my best it. advice for you on that love one. Love it. I love so, yeah, it. Good yeah. for you that you're making yourself uncomfortable. That's a good thing. Now, one of the cool things that Ethan and his wife do every year is that they uh, kind of choose one word uh, for the year. Really simplistic, uh, resilience or discipline or whatever it is. Uh, and then that year they focus on that word. That word. So in a way, it's a kind of a cool New Year's resolution that they do. Uh, they each choose a different word, and they try to help each other uh, stick to that word. It's very simplistic, but it, it's uh, it can mean a lot. And so uh, I think that's a really cool thing that Ethan has. It's combined well, dude. That's really awesome. What a great relationship trait. For you. Yeah, appreciate it. Of course, uh, I would say uh, my something that uh, uh, a part of my personal creed. And uh, actually, I have in my office here, which is where we record most of our, our podcasts and uh, we actually do most of my work. I work from home most of the time. Uh, I have kind of three posters above my desk here. Uh, and it kind of reminds me of, of three different kind of attributes that I strive to uh, live by. One is the quote from uh, Theo Roosevelt, uh, Man in the Arena. I'm sure you've heard Excellent that one. Stuff. So uh, that just reminds me to take the risk. Uh, take the, I'm a data analyst by trade. And so I am very numbers driven and I need to be reminded to take the risk, uh, in life, uh, and, and go do something, even though I might fail, uh, take the risk and get out there and do something. 
And so that's a, a great reminder to me that I don't want to be on my deathbed with uh, a bunch of I wish I would have uh, regrets. Uh, the next one uh, in the middle is a picture of a boat uh, on a stormy sea. And with the mm-hmm. quote, a smooth seas never made a skilled sailor. Uh, that's the truth. Buddy. That one There's reminds, that difficulty that Ethan was talking yeah, about. Exactly. A, a ship wasn't made to just sit in the harbor. And so it kind of reminds me to go if I if I'm if I'm feeling like I'm just really comfortable. I mean, there are days when I when I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm working from home. I wake up, I, I just you know do my do my workout. It's just it's just very comfortable. And so I'm like, if I'm getting too comfortable, I'm like, I need to try something different. I need to keep mixing it up and and try pushing myself. Uh, and then when times get difficult, I remind myself, hey. I'm not going to be very skilled if things if I never have to over, overcome hard situations. So mm. that's kind of like my mantra is, uh, you know, uh, smooth seas never made a skilled sailor. Uh, and then the third picture I have is uh, the um, the poem by Dylan Thomas. It says that's uh, do not go gentle into that good night. Yeah. And many folks know this one from uh, it was uh, Interstellar. Uh, it just talks about. You been know, in lots of stuff. It was in the rundown too. That's yeah. a movie from The Rock. Eh? Just kind of fighting against the dying of the light. He said, you know, the, the the part that says rage, rage against the dying of the light. So it's kind of a for me, it's a almost like a memento mori, uh, if you will, like a reminder of death. That death mm-hmm. is inevitable, and whatever my actions are here on Earth, uh, make them worth it, uh, and and if and do and do things that bring me joy in this life. If I'm doing something that I don't like to do or that I'm not enjoying or I don't see the value in, don't do that thing. You know, uh, that doesn't that doesn't mean don't do hard things because I do hard things all the yeah. time that have uh, that, that have value. Uh, yeah, that's discipline. Yeah. And so uh, that's kind of a third reminder that uh, of, of the mortality that is before me. And uh, my this is my opportunity as I live and breathe to pass on a legacy to my kids pass on a legacy through the podcast and through my actions to my community uh, and family uh, of modeling fatherhood, modeling manhood and, and in kindness. So you guys are doing it right, man. You're living with intention. You're aware of what you are doing and how it's being received. And uh, so many people just float through their lives. I'd say most do. And the fact that you guys are choosing to do it the way you are, I commend that. Well done. We, we need more good fathers, more good men. You guys are going to make sure that uh, the boys that you raise are going to be good ones. So good for you. Thank you so much. Well, Travis, I, I wanted to you know give a, a shout out to our listeners who may not be familiar with uh, uh, with where to find you. Could you maybe uh, tell us our listeners where they could find you? Uh, maybe tell us uh, where they could find your podcast. And then your, your book here is The Ideal Man, Reviving Masculinity. Where can they find this? On your website? I know you have a website. The website is travisneville.com. Uh, if you just if you Google reviving masculinity, it's going to be the first thing that comes up. And from there, you get to the website. You can order T-shirts, stickers, books, whatever you want to. Uh, the podcast, any place that there are podcasts. I'm sure you guys are just as well, uh, you know, branched out. I'm on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and, and uh, iHeartRadio and Spreaker and any place you get podcasts, I'm out there. The audio version anyway. I've been on YouTube for a long time, but recently, evidently, I got so many strikes, not sure how, <laughs> talking about masculinity, they'll give you a strike, that uh, oh, I can't upload to YouTube anymore. So I've moved over to Rumble, which is a place that just, it functions just like YouTube. I've got okay. all my content up there. Yeah. So if you want to watch the podcast, you have to go to Rumble, but listening to them, yeah, you can you can go anywhere. But TravisNevel.com too, from there, you can get to all those other things I just mentioned. So that's kind of the hub. Yeah. But yeah, that's where yeah. you go. And geez, the books at Walmart, it's at Barnes and Noble. It's, it's everywhere, which is cool. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, I would say uh, for our listeners and for your listeners too that maybe haven't haven't, haven't read the book, it's it's an awesome read. Uh it's Thank you. It, it's it's definitely uh puts you in the right mindset for sure. And uh Travis, I, I really appreciate just your, your commentary and and as we talk through some of these things and some of these challenges as fathers and men. Um, you know, your, your opinion and thoughts have, have really given me personally kind of things to think about, you know, how can I, uh, come at things differently? How can I, um, you know, think, think a different way and, and really try to, 
not only in my own life become more masculine in in um but how can i apply that to you know my kids lives um you know i have three boys but as well each one of these things too i mean it can be applied to my daughter as well i I think it's just as important for her to 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 be able to maybe understand these traits and hopefully know that these are the traits of a uh, of the ideal man maybe someone that she wants to be with hopefully hopefully i can uh be that person that example for her to say you know i want i want to 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 join myself with someone that's like my dad you know i get that question all the time from women hey you write about masculinity all the time what's this going to do for girls what's this going to do for women and i always answer the, the bar. same way I mean, <laughs> yeah <laughs> what kind of uh what kind of young man do you want your daughter to date what kind of man do you want in a partner? Who do you want, uh, let's say, leading the country or running the business that you work for if it happens to be a man? I mean, that's how it helps you, okay? But the biggest one is, yeah, you know, who do you want your daughter dating? Somebody who wasn't instructed on in what it is to be a good man? Or someone who was. It's just that simple. Yeah. Excellent. And, and then for those uh, of your podcast uh, that might want to find us, uh, we are on uh, Instagram. Uh, we're actually on TikTok as well. Uh, you can find our podcast, A Brothers Creed, uh, on YouTube as well as pretty much every platform uh, that you can imagine. <laughs> uh, most of our, our, our listeners come from Spotify uh, and Apple, Apple Podcasts. Podcast. Yeah, I'm Apple Podcast number one. Spotify yeah. is like a far, a distant second. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll put some links to your show notes, uh, to, to your website and your podcast in our show notes, and we'll give you we'll ours to, to, to do the same. Uh, so uh, one of the things, if, if it's okay with you, uh, Travis, we, we'd like to end the episode uh, with a call to action that we usually do at the end of our episodes. We, we challenge, yeah. our after talking about something that's been uplifting, uh, we challenge our listeners uh, to apply what they've learned into this podcast today, and we ask them to build their creed with us so with that uh thanks for thanks for meeting with us and let's build our creed together let's do it